so we run a Makerspace Monday drop-in program for young people to come in and work on whatever original media production projects they want. Um, and then we also do a Workshop Wednesday series where we teach uh, specific media production skills. So right now we're doing a TV production program where they're going to create their own original TV pilot. Um, and we've done some, uh, some work in the past, a youth journalism program called You News, uh, that I was actually lucky enough to be able to collaborate with uh, the individual uh, sitting right to my right right now. So I want to make sure to introduce... Uh, my friend here, Chris Ferrone yes. from Dig Boston and from the Boston Institute of Nonprofit Journalism. Yes. And then we have Mike no, Mc sorry, Dan, well, Dan McCarthy. His brother's Mike, though. Brother's so it's Mike. okay. That was very <laughs> close. I don't know how that happened. Sorry. I just, you know, could have been a Mike. Are there more Mike <laughs> McCarthy's or Dan McCarthy's in the world? In here, the world. Uh, that might be a draw. Um, um, well, we're going to need to get another microphone out. I want to riff on that. Well, we could share mics. We're just okay. hanging. All right, cool. But I want to, uh, you know, the youth, me I mean, first of all, the, w what was the, do you know, was there a title for that piece that the youth did? It was on bicycle. It was on the cycle bike safety. safety. I think it was just called bicycle safety. But and, it was you know, this is, this is real talk. Like, so one thing, one thing with the, with the nonprofit, with the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism is, you know, we we're like born, we were born out of, uh, what was then called Press Pass TV, what yeah. is now called the Transformative Culture Project, based yep. out of Roxbury, and uh, they're a youth media nonprofit. They do a lot of the stuff that you do up here in Somerville, yep. on the other side of the world, as we say, right? Like you know, <laughs> if you live in like south of the city, it's like you know. Um, now, one thing we always did with them was like distributed and treated and disseminated youth media the way you do any other media, like because right. re because it is, it's real media. It is some of the realest media yeah. and we've done you know and that's that's on all topics now mm -hmm. the piece that i mean and the these were young they, they were how they little were, like, were they, they how were young like were they nine years old they're like nine years nine old years and old. i invite anyone to watch this now when the, by the time that um we did a vid, you know a bunch of video segments on bicycle safety and infrastructure and you know you brought that piece to the table i mm -hmm. had been like editing stories about bike biking uh, particularly right in this area yeah, actually this somerville area. cambridge a lot of that uh, the nightmare that is Beacon Street. Yep. Um, and so, you know, I kind of like knew all the talking points and just, you know, the people who you were interviewed. It took me a while, you know, and they really hit in that one, it's like an eight minute piece, like all yeah. these notes they hit. They talked to all the right organizations. Yep. They they you know, it wasn't it was not like a puff piece. People definitely talked about the difficult. I mean, really, it was there were people like it, sharing really personal stories yeah. about losing their friends. It, and, oh, yeah. And, you I know. mean, some of the great interviews yeah. really, um, you know, with people who, you know, were uh, probably reluctant to, to talk to media yep. in general. Um, but really, uh, great, really great journalism. There's not, yep. nothing Three about it. Nothing cute about it at all. They had a week. It was and a week. They, they had a week. That was, that was a one week. It was actually really four impressive. days. It was four days. Really impressive. It was a four day. They came in from nine to three and we were able to partner with the Neiman Journalism Lab at Harvard and then with, with Binge, uh, Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism. And they chose that topic. And the fact, you know, I have to really shout it out because, you know, I know that I believe that youth media is is any media, right, is, is just as important and should be, you know, valued in the same way as a media created by adults um, or uh, judged and assessed the same way. Um, but not everybody else does. And so the fact that you, Chris, and, you know, Jason and all of you guys decided to run that story as part of Beyond Boston, which is an ongoing partnership between all of these different um, community access stations around the greater Boston area, um, that was really incredible to be able to tell them and their families afterwards. I mean, that was definitely not part of the program. You didn't have to do that. Um, and in fact, it, it worked out so well and it definitely, I think, transformed them. That's awesome. And uh, I mean, I guess, Jason, you want to talk about Beyond Boston a little bit? Or, yeah, or, that, that was a great That was a great name yeah, drop. You know? Maybe we could just go. get into it because that's what we're here. That's that's how this this friendship has, uh, what it has blossomed Balls. from, right? Yeah, because we, we started working with, we, I mean, Erica Jones had us on uh, at one of her like um, kind of community media meetings here at um, at what do we call it SMC now right and um, then um, she mentioned in passing like an idea to do you know kind of a regional news show with other stations and I'm like do it do it do it do it you know and then a few months later we we started producing it in um, uh, 2016 and now we've you know we've done over a year we're in our second season. And um, so it was a no-brainer to have, you know, the kids that you were working with on that show. It was, it was perfect. The first one, did we do the first one? Is, 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 is his mic not on? His I, I don't know, but I don't here, see anybody who can help us fix that. But here, here take this. All right. Was this the, did we do the I first can, one here? Can we hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Did we do um, the first one here? The first one was, yeah, I think it was here. 
I mean, I, I guess I should recap if I wasn't on the on the uh, mic before. Um, we were here. Chris and I were on a, at a community media meeting that she was doing with different producers here at SMC, and um, you know, back in early 2016. And then she mentioned that we, you know, we should. She'd been thinking about uh, getting other, um, um, you know, public access stations together to do a regional news show. And we were like, yeah, 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 do it, do it, do it. And then a few months later, we started producing Beyond Boston, uh, which is a news digest show where we take the best stuff we get on particular themes. Usually each each uh, episode is a theme, you know, uh, whatever it is, transportation, housing, you name it. And then now we've, um, you know, we started doing a show. You know, the first show was here, we think. Uh, and then uh, we've, we've recorded at, at least five stations. Historians have showed that the first yeah. the first one may have been here. Yeah, we believe so. And then Watertown and Brookline and Malden and Cambridge, and we've just been rotating around. And then we syndicate those shows all over eastern Massachusetts and even in New Jersey now, apparently, and then on YouTube. So, um, yeah, so when... when I love the talking, idea of somebody in Jersey just sitting I know. there. Hey, what is this? What's sitting there in their <laughs> devil's sweatpants. <laughs> Yeah, everybody be quiet. going on. I don't know. I, should we just pass this one around? These are awfully short uh, cables. Um, yeah, I know, it's true. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, let's prep for, so for the next episode, which is the 13th episode, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, 14, it's, 14. it's about these kinds of stations. About the, like, uh, and I didn't yeah. know. Did you know that this community media day was all around the country? Like Brooklyn's doing this and... <clears throat> I did not. It's happening all over the place. Or if I did, I forgot. So, I'm not so is it? I'm not, so like, is it the? Ge- is it generally the same formula through which the, you know? Uh, um, We'd have th- to ask. These are paid for through cable stations. As far as how the as stations th- run. Through, yeah, through cable fees yeah, it's, it's nationally. The same everywhere, yeah. So yeah. what is it? Like, what this is, guy George Stoney came up with this idea, I think, like back in the early '70s, late '60s, early '70s, and um, um, I think uh, Manhattan, MNN in Manhattan, was like pretty much the first station or one of them. Um, to use this formula where you got, uh, you know, usually like 3% or something uh, off of the, uh, the, the fees that uh, uh, cable, cable companies pay to be in a given city. Uh, it's part of the deal. Like if they're going to get to run their wires on public rights of way, then they should pay some money to the cities. Of course, the companies have been fighting this, like, you know, fighting paying that levy. And certainly as part of that levy, they've been, they've been paying for community access stations, for public access stations. And so now... Uh, all of this is in jeopardy. This whole system of media centers all over the country is in jeopardy. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing a show about that on the various stations that are in jeopardy. So that's going to be interesting. And we're recording the next one here again, I believe, right? The next one's here? I think so. Yeah. So what's, you know, do we take it, do we all take, you know, people in general take for advantage uh, these resources? Uh, are we just, you know, I mean, through all problem, these cuts, you know, first of all, yeah. If this, you know, this kind of community initiative does not seem like something that would be popular for can, people who don't like that, powerful people. So why are they still around? How, you know, how they? Well, because I mean, you know, the, the, the free speech part of what they do has been fronted in most of these stations. Uh, most of them don't involve themselves, and we're, we apologize for the traffic noise. Most of these kinds of stations don't involve themselves in local politics over much. They don't like say, "Gee, you know, Mayor, you shouldn't do." Like, let's say the assembly road development the way you did it, that wasn't cool. Um, they're, they're, even un- you know, they're even nervous about having producers, local people, talk about those issues on their stations. So they've tried to remain above the political fray. But as the very existence of these stations is in jeopardy, I think you, you're going to find more stations like, um, like Somerville here that, yeah, are big about free speech. Obviously, like we're on free speech radio right now, right, you know, here at, the, here at SMC. But... They're also willing to get involved more and sort of stand up for themselves and for people's right to have a media that anybody can get on and say, hey, you know, hey, cable companies, hey, local governments, you know, don't make deals that get rid of us or that force us to try to be some kind of mini PBS or NPR that just like try to get, you know, basically upper middle class people and rich people to donate to them so they can survive. And in doing so, change the content of the programming. The fact that this is funded, you know, through (coughs) public government, through local government, with a levy on the corp on, on the uh, cable companies, the you know, and the um, and and in some places the telecoms, that's good. That means that it's for everybody. You know, like we're getting this money in a public way to produ- to to provide a public service media that anybody can jump on and talk about whatever. Um, so so that's under threat as the cable companies try to get out from under these levies, saying, hey, the telecoms, the phone companies, they do cable now too and stuff, and they don't pay these levies. Why should we? 
blah, 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 blah. Oh, and why don't we cut deals by state instead of by individual city, which of course results in worse deals, where cities like Somerville get less money for this kind of station. That's not gonna fly. We gotta, we gotta keep the system the way it is and improve it. Dan, anything to add? <laughs> to that? No, that was pretty comprehensive, All I right. think. Um, this is I've, what we'll be talking about next week. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's good to give them a preview. I mean, ultimately, some of the, like, the really important things that you know SMC does, that you guys do with Binge, that anybody that's sort of taking a proactive um, effort to uh, keep this kind of you know community media and community media production, independent <laughs> journalism alive, is something you guys talked about already, which is uh, early media literacy yes. uh, for, for youth. Um, yep. and not just media literacy in the sheer production standpoint. Like this is a you know this is a motherboard. Here's how you use the master controls. Like media literacy in terms of here's how you can suss out what is what is something that's legitimate information to pay attention to. What is not? What is hype? Like that line is so blurred these days that there's going there's going to come a singularity moment where unless there is like significant efforts being made to really teach people how to use this right. unending supply of free and accessible right. media there's right. go we're going to have situation i mean i'd say like a you worst case scenario could happen but i think we've already hit it, the worst case scenario given what's going on at the national level but i mean i would just say that that's one aspect i always like hearing you guys talk about and hearing what smc is doing yeah. for that youth media literacy i think that's hugely important it's one of those things <laughs> like uh don't don't let trump find out about community media centers <laughs> <laughs> don't tell this guy. Don't let it be on his cable station on like when he's flipping around in, in his dirty undies at night, yeah. you know? I mean, one issue we're going to be talking about in the next Beyond Boston that, that talks about the various um, political threats to, to cable access, to public access, to media centers, you know, around the country is um, uh, the fact that, uh, like, when you're on Comcast around here and you want to see what's on the local channels, you can't see it. It just says local channel 8. Right. Local Channel right. 96. It doesn't say what the show is. So people don't know, for example, that Beyond Boston is on unless they happen to be active members of SMC, of CCTV in Cambridge or whatever. Right. And they go, oh, this show's on now. I'm going to watch it. You know, And that's a problem. We need to like break through that one in negotiations with these companies. Now, where do you think the line is between getting that kind of expo? Like, you know, we, we decry the use of social media that's sort of become this robber baron, ver various ways of you know, getting content out there. But in that case, like this is, that's one of those moments where using social media to expand the reach of this thing that's getting stonewalled by. Well, um, they're the only channels that get so sto stonewalled as right. well. Go ahead, sorry, Hilda. Why don't you just work? Work. All right. Oh, hey, here we go. I don't know if this um, is right. Here we are. Okay, we're great. Um, I was just going to say, I mean, I think I think the other thing is that the perspective of, like, what community media is is very limited in, in like, the larger context. I mean, we always know, we know the, like, Zach Galifianakis, like, oh, between, yeah. two between two ferns kind of <laughs> joke. And, like, that, I think, um, is funny, but it's also, like, what I think a lot of people think community media is. It's Wayne's just, World, like, you know, know a do yeah, yeah, Wayne's World, U H. well, actually, our, our station's more like UHF. Right. Uh, <laughs> Wayne's World, I always, go to, I, I always go to Wayne's World. I don't know, it's, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, I don't know, it's still better than the set that they end up giving them, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. No, UHF was actually my favorite movie oh, as yeah. a child, and then, like, I live this fantasy Bring out every the day. fire hose! <laughs> <laughs> Conan the Librarian. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, pre, I pre Kramer <laughs> Michael Richards in, <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. in an early Emo zany Phillips. comedy piece. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pre Emo Phillips pre Seinfeld, pre racism. Right. Well, he was or still was probably it? definitely a racist. Oh, yeah. Or but was he just it? Didn't yeah, talk about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that's like there part of what Somerville Media Center is really trying to do here is 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 you know break down that and like other amazing like media centers, obviously like Brick in Brooklyn and um, CCTV even locally and BNN mm -hmm. um, or uh, BNN. Big in yeah. in Brookline, Brookline BNN in Boston. Group, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know are trying to break down this sort of um, stereotype of what's you know community media can mean. I mean just here on on uh, Channel Three on SCAT TV we have um, you know shows like the heavy leather topless dance party which right. are every Wednesday night we have we have uh, live bands we have burlesque comedy all, all happening all at once um, with like a live dance go-go dancers right. and like absurd absolutely absurd like old school MTV style shows with all local guests local you know um, how do you guys get the word out for those kinds of shows I feel like 
So it really comes down, a lot of it just comes down to the producers themselves and what kind of a pull they have <laughs> locally. I mean, I think we do a good job using, we try to, you know, use Facebook and other social yeah. media, Facebook Live, um, you know, to build that buzz. But, I mean, even still, I feel like, you know, this is literally, I'm shouting it to the world, guys. <laughs> you have one of the best local access stations in the you country really right yeah. here. Um, we are putting together content that is completely and totally unique, you know, mm -hmm. from that to, um, you know, to <laughs> DIY the show, which is all about like the, the history of, um, or like the reasoning behind or how you kind of go from an idea to actually creating something in all different fields from art to music to um, self-help. And I think they're having a crystal healer on the next one or something. <laughs> I don't know. You know, whatever. It's great. They can do that. Um, we have, you know, folks who do belly dancing, uh, you know, exhibitions. And we have the youth media, which is some of the most because of these <laughs> tragic times we live in. I think the kids are more cynical and creative than ever. Um, and so they're making like incredible weirdo art. I have one example on uh, YouTube, if you check it out, this video called Alien Sun, and it's this kid doing an absolutely spot on Alex Jones impression, huh. um, you know, in front of our green screen. It's just, it's really special what we got going on here, and it's really unique. And then between that and the partnerships with Beyond, you know, Bo Beyond Boston and, you know, other partners that we have, um, you know, again, I think, um, not to toot our own horn, but that's exactly what today is about. It's tooting our own horn, and I'm going to continue to do it. Well, I have a question about that. So, you know, yeah. one thing that we, that Beyond Boston is tooled for is, uh, you know, trying to work with a bunch of the different stations around here uh, to network, you know, help network a lot of the stations around here to see what issues are, you know, important to communities across lines, you know. And uh, I'm wondering... What kind of what kind of relationships? How do you how do those relationships work with the stations like uh, in other states? Like, what do you learn? I know that you have a conference coming up. Yeah. Uh, not far from here, but in general, like, do you talk to stations in Brooklyn? Do you? Yeah. You know, so that kind of thing? I think um, you know the person who's really really excellent with that is um, is Erica Jones. Um, she is just like a powerhouse in so many different ways, but she's also on the regional board, and so I think that helps her get in contact. I mean, she was just meeting with someone from. Um, I think it was the, oh my gosh, was it Minneapolis? The um, There's like a really awesome public access station there that I'm forgetting right now. Um, but also has connected me with folks from Philly Cam so I could collaborate Philly with Cam. them on, on youth project ideas. I do a lot of webinars and stuff. So I, I just did one on youth engagement and like civic engagement through youth media. That was really cool. Um, and definitely the conference coming up. I'm actually presenting two back-to-back -back workshops, <laughs> one on, uh, you know, how to start your own LPFM or internet radio station, and the other one on uh, how to create engaging youth programs uh, at your youth <laughs> at your media center. So, What's the deal um, with that? Are there other stations out there to be had right now? Uh, other stations. Other frequencies right now? So, unfortunately, the LPFM thing, it's going to be... I think the last round was yeah. like 2010 or okay. 2011 was the application round, and they're supposed to come out every 10 years. And I don't mm. think our friend. So Ajit this would be the time Pai to gear up. Is right? gonna yeah exactly at right. The FCC. Our I good don't I don't think our good friend Ajit Pai at the FCC is gonna like be like uh, really hurrying to get that one out. So Probably 2021 not. or 2020 is when we're gonna be reapplying. Um, I think at the time they had applied, Boston Free Radio had applied for one, and um, it was just a rough time. Um, because the the founder had just passed away, so it was kind of like a really wasn't the best time to be applying. So we're gonna try that again in full force. But the way that we get around that is we have friendships with yeah. other local access stations. So Boston Neighborhood Network has their own FM LP FM station, yeah. uh, one hundred two point nine WBCA. We have a show on that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Sometimes, so yeah, so yeah. we collaborate with them where we give them an hour's worth of programming. Um, you know, uh, once a week. So every Thursday from 10 to 11, um, we are give it, we're broadcasting Boston Free Radio programming on, awesome. on the FM dial. So, you know, we, there's benefits and drawbacks, as you know, to internet radio. We've known each other in the internet radio world for many yeah, years now. Yeah, no, totally. And, you know, John, of course, from who, who works with us. Wonderful. Love cool. Love Bring him in. I'm going to, I'm going to, we have to um, uh, fight traffic uh, following no. this anyway, but it's all no. good. Wait. Well, let me give you guys a chance no. to shout out like yeah, anything I mean, that you want to shout out before it's time for us to go. I'm going to give this back to Dan. Oh. Okay. All right. Never mind. Well, okay. all, th all, all three of you guys. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what are we working on? I mean, we're working on, uh, well, I mean, I really, I was excited to come here and learn more about how this is happening in other cities too. I yeah. mean, yeah. Uh, we are, you know, the nonprofit, it's, it's a 
and I hate the stupid joke, but it really is a nonprofit. Like this isn't something we take money home for. This is right. kind of like to bolster journalism and uh, being, you know, what it is. We kind of have this toolkit for uh, uh, basically any, you know, any media, any town where media really needs some assistance. And, you know, we're helping people in other cities start something just like we have with Binge. Yep. Uh, so that's what's something we're really excited about. Uh, and you'll be seeing us do more of that in the next year. Locally, since we're here in Somerville, yeah. I have to shout out the uh, <coughs> tough students from Jumbo Code. Nice. The tough students from Jumbo Code are making us a map that you're going to be able to access your news from a map. So you'll basically just be able to go to this like uh, uh, URL and uh, click wherever you want. What do I need to know about Union Square? Yeah, you want to see all the articles that happened out of Union Square. Literally, nice. you can search. You know, there'll be layers just like anything else, but very simple. You know, nothing. I'm not trying. You know, we're not trying to. Uh, this is not like the app that's going to reinvent journalism. It's just going to be a really <laughs> nice way to search for community news. And it's not just going to be like binge stories or dig stories. It's going to have stories from everyone from from uh, the Community Media Center here to uh, um, to Boston Community Media Center, Cambridge Community Media Center, you name it. So yeah. um, I don't know. Right. What do you what are you so psyched about? Oh, and I'm psyched about doing more trainings. You know, we've done some of that here at SMC. Oh, now I can hear myself. I wonder if I was on at all. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Well, just assume whatever we just said before. Don't worry. <laughs> and um, we, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's commotion here. Um, we uh, would really like to get out in the communities and do workshops. And if you got a, a like community this. organization, you know, a, 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 even a, a church, temple, VFW, whatever, you know, and you want us to come and talk about journalism and teach you how to do Great. some basic stuff in your community, do a newsletter, do whatever. And any media, we do check, got you check. covered. You know, Chris, me, all our check, friends, check. Dan here, you know, people from SMC, if we're in Somerville or, you know, other friends we have at CCTV in Cambridge, whatever city we're in, we'll come help you out. Um, we enjoy doing that. Yeah, all we need is like a picnic table. And uh, it's nice to have all this equipment as well. But you know, we can just takes. we can just chat. We just <laughs> yeah. rap. So that's it. Follow us. Uh, what what are we're, we are actually broadcasting on a million places here? So you know, at uh, uh, binge reports on Twitter, uh, bingeonline.org for yep. web for yeah. web, uh, yeah. digboston.com. We're mm -hmm. easy to find, man. Yeah, we also run the city news city weekly, so which we could talk more about some other time. But yeah, Definitely. shout out to Dig Boston. Well, thanks, thanks for, for having thanks us. For that nice oh, and I think I'm gonna. Week. What time are you starting on Sunday? What time does the uh, uh, show starts at it? Uh, doors are at nine, and the show starts at nine thirty because they double booked us with shit face Shakespeare. I mean, Duh. what faced Shakespeare? Free speech. Come on. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You that's know, right. <laughs> oh, I was gonna bring my daughter when to you. next started, time. Like, when you do a day show, I'm coming though. All right, real. we'll definitely be <laughs> doing right, well, one. Well, thank you. All right, thanks thank you. Good luck. Thank you guys I see so you, much. You have a match of your own. Thank so. you. Oh yes, it's gonna be it's gonna be special. Thank <laughs> you.